This PowerPoint presentation is about chapter 11, which is optics. This chapter also discusses the images formed by the reflection of light from plane and spherical mirrors, as well as the images formed by the refraction of light from lenses. The law of reflection in Snell's law will be used to solve problems regarding reflection and refraction of light. The first topic is the reflection of light, in which the focus is plane mirror and spherical mirror. In the figure, it was shown that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal to the surface all lie in the same plane, and then the angle of incidence equals the angle of F of reflection. So meaning if the angle of incidence is equal to 30 degrees, the angle of reflection is also 30 degrees. Since the given is 30 degrees for incident uh, or the angle of incidence and 30 degrees also for the angle of reflection, we can say that the angle between incident ray to the reflected ray is twice of 30 which is 60 degrees. Again, the angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray is twice of the angle of incidence. Incident ray is the ray coming from the light source and the reflected ray is of course the ray reflected from the surface. In the surface, we are using a plane mirror. Again, theta i which is the angle of incidence is equal to theta r which is the angle of reflection. It was shown here about the difference between the specular reflection and diffuse reflection. In spherical reflection, the reflected rays are parallel to each other. The person's right hand becomes the image left hand if a person is looking at, the, uh, at his image in a plane mirror. The image has three properties. First, it is upright. Second, it is the same size as you are, meaning if you are uh, 1.72 meters in height, your, the size of the image as seen in the mirror is also 1.72 meters. The image is as far behind the mirror are you are, are you are in front of it. So meaning the distance or your distance from the mirror is equal to the image from the mirror. It was shown here that um, the image form in a plane mirror is a virtual image. The geometry used to show that the image distance is equal to the object distance. In a plane mirror, again, the angle of the object from the mirror is equal to the distance of the image to the mirror. Again, if the distance of the object to the mirror is 5 meters, the angle of or the distance of the image to the mirror is also 5 meters. So they are equal. In that case, if we will be solving for the distance from the object to the image, that is simply twice of the distance of the object to the mirror or twice of the distance of the image uh, to the mirror. In the inside surface of spherical mirror is polished, it is a concave mirror. And if the outside surface is polished, it is a convex mirror. So the law of reflection applies just as it does for a plane mirror. So the principal axis of the mirror is the straight line drawn through the center and the midpoint of the mirror. And then the light rays near and parallel to the principal axis are reflected from the concave mirror and converge at the focal point. So the capital F there is called the focal point and the distance from the focal point to the mirror is called the focal length. The focal point on a concave mirror is halfway between the center of curvature and the mirror, C and the mirror at B. So to solve for the focal point or the focal length, so focal length is simply equal to one half multiplied by the radius or center of curvature. So the difference between the concave mirror and the convex mirror is simply the sign. For a concave mirror, f is equal to one half r, and then for the convex mirror, f is equal to negative one half r. So we have to be um, reminded of the different uh, representations that we will be using in this topic. F will be the focal length, DO is the object distance, DI is the image distance, and M, M is the magnification. This diagram are used to derive the mirror equation, in which we have this mirror equation. So the mirror equation is simply this equation, in which 1 over the distance of the object to the mirror, plus 1 over the distance of the image to the mirror, is equal to 1 over the focal length. If we will be solving to for the magnification, so we have two formulas. Okay, the first formula to get the magnification is 
the, the ratio between the height of the image with the height of the object or that is hi over ho or that can be also computed using this equation which is negative the distance of image over the distance of the object we have to be also reminded of these sign conventions for spherical mirrors f is positive for a concave mirror f is negative for a convex mirror DO is or the distance of the in, of the object is positive if the object is in front of the mirror otherwise that is negative if the object is behind the mirror the same thing with the DI which is uh, distance of the image to the mirror and DI which is uh, it, it can be positive or negative depending on the location of the image from the mirror if this is in front of the mirror so DI is positive if the object is behind the mirror or the image is behind the mirror so that is a negative so if the image is in front of the mirror so that's a real image but if the object is behind the mirror that is considered as a virtual image m is positive for an upright object m is negative for an inverted object so this is an example about a concave mirror in which we will be using the the mirror equation in this example or in this problem we have a 2.5 centimeter object so this is the height of the object and that is placed 6.2 centimeter from a concave mirror so we have also the given distance of the object the radius of curvature is also given which is r and that is equal to 10.20 centimeter we are asked to get the location of the image and its size again we have um, height of the object so this is equal to 2.5 centimeter distance of the object from the the concave mirror 6.20 centimeter the radius of curvature is also given 10.20 centimeter so for us to get the location of the image or that is di so we need to use the mirror equation so under the mirror equation so this is the formula 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di so this is equal to 1 over di or the distance of the image so the, we're going to derive the formula for the location of the image so that is 1 over di so 1 over di is simply 1 over f minus 1 over distance of the object so we need to get the value of the focal length in which that can be solved using the uh, radius of curvature in the previous slide so the focal length is equal to one half of r so this is positive because we are dealing with a concave mirror and one half of r one half of 10.20 centimeter that is 5.10 centimeter so this is the value of the focal length so since we already have the value of the distance of the object so we can use now the formula to get the distance of the image so this is equal to 1 over di is equal to 1 over 5.10 centimeter minus 1 over the distance of the object which is 6.20 centimeter so we need to get the di so di is equal to so di is equal to 28.75 so this is 28.75 centimeters so this is the distance of the image to the concave mirror and then after that we need to get the size of the the image so the size of the image can be computed using the magnification formula in which the magnification formula has this uh, equation so magnification is equal to the height of the image over the height of the object or equal to the negative distance of the image over the distance of the object so in this case so since we have the the values now for di and do the same thing with this ho we can solve for um, we can solve for the size of the image or that's hi so i'll be erasing first the this equation so for for me to have a space to solve for the hi again using the the formula for magnification so according to the formula so hi we're going to use this equation 
So from that one, we need to, uh, to solve for hi. hi is equal to negative di over do multiplied by ho or height of the object. So we just need to substitute all the given. So we have negative di. So that's negative of 28.75. So di is computed. So that's the answer for letter E. 28.75 centimeter over do which is given so 6.20 centimeter and that is to be multiplied by the height of the object and the height of the object is also given that is equal to 2.5 centimeter so multiplied by 2.5 centimeter so negative 28.75 centimeter multiplied by 2.5 centimeter divide by 6.20 centimeter so this is equal to negative 11.59 so the height of the image is 11.59 centimeter so what is the meaning of the negative value here so the negative value for hi indicates that the image is inverted with respect to the object so the image is inverted so this is these are the answer for the first problem on the second problem, an object is placed 5 cm in front of the concave mirror. Again, so we have the given distance of the object that has a 12 cm focal length. So the 12.0 cm is the value of the focal length. And then we are asked to get the location of the image, which is di. And then the object is 1.5 cm, so we have the given height of the object. So we are asked again to get the, the height of the image. Again, we'll be using the formula for the for uh, uh, the mirror equation formula. So we need to get the, the di. Again, this is the formula. 1 over di is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over d sub o. So that is simply equal to. So 1 over f is, again, f is given. That is 12 centimeters. 1 over 12.0 centimeters minus the distance of the object to the concave mirror. That's 5.0 centimeters. So di is equal to 8.57 centimeters. Okay, so the image is behind the mirror and the image is virtual since the value of the, dis of the distance of the image is negative. So this is the answer for letter A. Now let's look or let's find the, the answer for letter B in which we're looking for the image height. Again, for the image height, so let's use again the, the equation for, for magnification. So this is equal to negative di over do multiplied by ho. So we have negative of the image of the uh, distance of the image negative 8.57 centimeter all over distance of the object that is also given so that's equal to 5.0 centimeter multiplied by the height of the the object that is, which is also given 1.5 centimeter so negative negative 8.57 centimeters Multiplied by 1.5 centimeters divided by 5.00 centimeters. The answer is 2.57. So this is positive 2.57 centimeters. The height of the image is 5.7 centimeters. So the image is larger than the object. So the answer is positive which indicates that the image is upright. So in this problem, we are dealing with a convex mirror. Okay, in again, the difference between a convex mirror and the concave mirror is the value of the focal length. For the convex mirror, the value of the focal length is a negative, or is negative. In this problem, we have the given distance of the object, 60 centimeters. So that is 60 centimeters in front of the mirror. Focal length is also given, negative 40 centimeter. Again, that is negative 40 because we are dealing with a convex mirror so the value of the frequency is, or the value of the focal length is negative 
So find the location of the image and the magnification. So again, we are asked to get the the distance of the image. The formula again is 1 over f minus 1 over distance of the object. So we have 1 over negative 40 centimeter. This is the focal length minus 1 over the given distance of the object, 60 centimeters. So di is equal to negative 24 centimeters. Again, 1 over negative 40 minus 1 over 60. The answer is negative 24 centimeters. So the negative value, the negative sign, indicates that the image is behind the mirror and therefore the image is a virtual or the image is a virtual image. Okay. Next, let's solve for the next question. So find the magnification. Again, magnification can be computed by using the distance using distance of image and distance of object, or it can be uh, also computed using height of the object and height of the image. But since the given here are distance of object and distance of image, so let's use that uh, those given. So this is negative di over do. So negative di is 24 centimeters over distance of the object we have 60 centimeters this is equal to negative negative that will be positive 0.40 so 0.40 is the magnification so the image is smaller because the value of m is less than 1 meaning if you get a, a value of magnification which is less than 1 the image is smaller that is the meaning so the uh, the image is also upright because m is positive and again that is upright with respect to the object so we are looking for the focal length in this problem okay find the focal length of the mirror so what are you given we have the six centimeters in front of the mirror so that is the distance of the object and then the virtual image is located four centimeters away from the mirror and is smaller than the object okay in this case we are not sure if this is a concave mirror or a convex mirror but uh, if we're going to solve the uh, this one and then based on the answer we can conclude or we can say if or we can determine if this is a convex or a, a concave mirror so let's use the the focal length so this is the formula 1 over do plus 1 over di so this is equal to 1 over the distance of the object, 6.0 centimeters, plus the distance of the image. Again, that is a smaller. According to that, that is smaller. And this is, uh, okay, let's compute first. So this is negative 4.0 centimeter. So here, the answer here is 1 over 6 centimeters plus 1 over negative 4 centimeters. Okay, why did we use negative here? Okay, the reason why we use negative here is based on the problem, according to the problem, the virtual image is located 4 centimeters from the mirror and is smaller than the object. So meaning we can say that uh, the image is behind the mirror. If the object is behind the, if the image is behind the mirror, the value of the distance of the image is negative. Okay, that's the reason why we use negative there. Again, the reason is because the image is behind the mirror so the answer here is negative 12 centimeters okay so the answer is negative meaning if the the focal length is negative that is a convex mirror so in this case this problem is about convex mirror now let's proceed with the second topic which is the refraction of light in this one, we will be discussing Snell's law, and then the other one is the uh, lenses. Okay, we will be identifying the, the images formed by the refraction of light using uh, diverging lens and converging lens. So light travels through a vacuum at speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. So this is the constant value of the speed of light. 
Okay? So, the same thing with the, with the previous chapter in which electromagnetism, so since light is uh, an electromagnetic wave, and then an electromagnetic wave has uh, a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second, so the same thing with light, they have the same uh, speed. So, light travels through materials at speed less than its speed in a vacuum. So, we have this equation in which N, which is the index of refraction of material, that is simply equal to the ratio of the speed of light. Again, the speed of light is constant. That is the volume over the speed of light in the material. So the material is, um, of course, the, the velocity or the speed of the light depends on the material, of course, because different material gives different index of refraction. Okay, so we have this problem in which the given material here is acrylic glass. And then for the acrylic glass, the index of refraction is 1.50. The question here is, what is speed of light in acrylic glass? So we will be using the formula for the, the formula for index of refraction, and then this is equal to C over B. Again, C is the speed of light, then B is the speed of light in the in the medium, in the given medium. Again, the medium here is acrylic glass. So we need to derive the formula for V. So V is simply C over N. So V is equal to the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meter per second over the index of refraction of acrylic glass, 1.5. So the speed of light in acrylic, acrylic glass is equal to 1.5. Okay, so I'll be computing for that and then the value is 2.0 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. So this is the speed of light in acrylic glass. Again, using the formula N is equal to the speed of light divided by the speed of light in a given medium. So um, illustrated here is the, the table showing the index of refraction for various substances. For diamond, that is 2.42. For glass, we have this given. Then for air, that's 1. And for water, we have 1.33. Okay, so those are the uh, the common the common uh, substances that we will be using in some of our problems. Again, for water, that's 1.33. For air, that's 1.0. So in the refraction of light, anyway. So what is refraction of light? So when light moves from one medium to another, its direction of travel changes. And this change in direction is called refraction. Actually, it's not only the, the change in medium. If there will be change in the velocity or speed of the up light, there will be also refraction. And then if there will be also changes in the temperature of the, of the medium, of the two mediums, there will be also uh, refraction of light. So we have this Snell's law here. Okay, this Snell's law of refraction in which uh, when light travels from a material with one index of refraction to a material with a, an, a different index of refraction, the angle of incidence is related to the angle of refraction. So we have this equation, n1 sine theta1. The n1 here is the index of refraction of the, the first medium. Okay, So that will be the index of refraction of the first medium. If this is the incident ray, and then the, the medium here is air, and then for air, that's equal to 1. So meaning N1 here is the index of refraction of air. So that's the first medium. Sine theta 1, the theta 1 here is the angle of incidence. Here's the theta 1. N2 is the, of course, the index of refraction of the second medium. So if our second medium is water, if this is water, the index of refraction of water is 1.33. So meaning this is equal to 1.33 if this is water. Sine theta 2 is the index of refraction. So this one. So this is called the index of refraction. Again, N1 is the first medium. Sine theta 1 is the, the angle or the incident, uh, the angle of incidence. N2 is the index of uh, refraction of the second medium. And sine theta 2 is the theta 2 there is the index of refraction.
A light ray strikes uh, an air water surface at an angle of 46 degrees with respect to the normal. Okay, we have the given angle of incidence that's equal to 46 degrees. And then according to this, a light ray strikes an air to water. Air muna siya, then to water. Okay, and then we have this angle. So the given angle is 46 degrees. Okay, and then find the angle of refraction when the direction of the ray is from air to water. And then for letter B, that's the opposite direction from water to air. Okay, for the uh, for letter A, from air to water, again, we're going to use the, the Snell's law. Okay, the formula for Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 equal to N2 sine theta 2. Again, this is for the first medium. This is for the second medium. Then this compute for the theta 2 or the the, uh, the angle of refraction. So theta 2. So that can be computed by deriving the formula for sine theta 2. So that will be equal to N1 sine theta 1 over N2. So divide both sides by N2. That's the formula for sine theta 2. So in this problem, the first medium is air and the index of refraction of air is 1. The angle of incidence is 46, so the sine 46 divided by the index of refraction of water because the second medium is water, so the value is 1.33. Again, that is constant. So sine theta 2 is equal to 0.54. So that's the value of sine theta 2. So we need to get the, the value of the angle. So of course, to get the, uh, the value of the angle, if you're going to use your calculator, that is simply shift uh, sine of 0.54 so that's equal to 33 degrees. For letter B, we just need to, to, to change the direction. So for letter A, that is from air to water. Now for letter B, that will be from water to air. So the first medium here is water, then the second medium is air. So we have the given angle again. So the given angle for, uh, this is from water to air. So in that case, this will be the incident ray. And then this is the angle of incidence. This is the second medium. And then this is the refracted ray. So meaning this will be the angle of refraction. Okay, so we need to get that value. So again, the formula is uh, Snell's law. Okay, N1 sine theta 1 equal to N2 sine theta 2. Again, our value of uh, the first medium here is water. The second medium is air. So in that case, we'll be using again this formula. N1 now is per water, that is equal to 1.33. Angle of incidence is, point, uh, is 46 degrees over the index of refraction of air, that's 1. So this is equal to 0.96. Ship uh, sine of 0.96, that is equal to 74 degrees. Okay, so this is about apparent, uh, apparent depth. Okay, the question here is, or uh, at what angle of incidence should the light be aimed? Okay, so the search light on a yacht is being used to eliminate a sunken chest. So we need to get the angle of incidence here. Okay. So in this problem, in this problem, so here is the the incident or the, this is the refracted ray, and then from the surface of water to the location of the chest. That's 3.3 .3 meters. Uh, so this is the the depth, okay, or the height, and then from this to the chest, the distance is 2.0 meters. So that is the horizontal distance. Again, the horizontal distance is 2.0 meters. The vertical distance is 3.3 .3 meters. So in this problem again, we need to to use the the, the formula for uh, to get the angle of incidence and that can be used uh, solved using Snell's law. Again, we have this equation. Okay, our first medium is water. Uh, sorry, the first medium is air. Then the second medium here is water. So this is the same with um, letter A of the of the previous uh, problem. Okay, now the challenge here is there's no given angle of refraction. Okay, so we know the, the value of the index of refraction of water, so that's 1.33. The index of refraction of air is 
but we don't know this value. Okay, so for us to solve this value, we can use the, again, uh, we, can, we can solve this one using Pythagorean theorem, but we can also solve this, uh, this angle by using tangent theta, in which tangent theta is equal to the horizontal height or the horizontal distance, that's 2 meters, divided by the, the vertical distance or height, that's 3.3 meters. So let's just get the ball of theta. So that will be this equation now. So 2 over 3.3 .3 meters. So shift tangent of the, the quotient. So it's equal to 31 degrees. So meaning in this case, the angle of refraction is equal to 31 degrees. So we already have the angle of refraction. Okay, so that's 31. This is the index of refraction of water. This is the index of refraction of, uh, of air. So the value of the sine theta 1 is 0.69 shift sine of 0.69 so the angle of incidence is equal to 44 degrees apparent depth observer directly above object so this is about the apparent depth okay in which we can get the the apparent depth using this equation so di which is the apparent depth equal to d multiplied by the index of refraction of the second medium over the index of refraction of the first medium. Again, the D here is the actual depth. This is the actual depth, and then we are um, asked to get the apparent depth. In this problem, a swimmer is uh, spreading water with her head above the water at the surface of pool 3 meters deep. Okay. So that's the vertical displacement or vertical distance. She sees a coin on the bottom directly below. Okay, so assuming this is the coin. Okay, this is the actual depth. That this is equal to 3 meters. How deep does the coin appear to be? Okay, so how far is the is the coin in the perspective of the of the person looking at the the surface of the water? Okay, so we're going to use this formula again. So that's uh, d prime, which is apparent depth. Okay, d is the the given depth, the actual depth. That's three meters multiplied by the one point zero zero per air. Okay, and then this one is the index of proportion of water. Okay, so that's equal to two point twenty six meters. Okay, so that is the the vertical distance okay uh, assist by the uh, depth server so when light process from a medium of larger refractive index into a smaller refractive index the refracted ray bends away from the normal so we have here the critical angle so the critical angle is simply um, equal to sine theta equal to n2 over n1. So the theta here or the critical angle is simply arc sine of n2 over n1. A beam of light is propagating through a diamond and strike the diamond ear interface at the angle of incidence of 28 degrees. Okay, so we have the given angle of incidence. So will part of the beam enter the air or will there be total internal reflection? So the question here is, will there be refraction or none? Then repeat part A, assuming that the diamond is surrounded by water. Okay, for letter A, um, again, so for letter A, so this, the, the diamond is surrounded by air. So meaning the, the medium, the two mediums are air and diamond. Okay, if we're going to use the, the formula for the critical angle. So this is the formula, sine theta sine theta is equal to n2 over n1 okay again the formula for theta or the critical angle is um, sine to the negative one or shift sine multiple of the n2 over n1 so this one so n2 is given okay again so that is the index of refraction of air okay that's equal to one and then uh, the index of refraction of diamond is on the table on the table, the index of refraction of diamond is 
Okay, so that's equal to 24.4 degrees. So because the angle of incidence um, of 28 degrees is greater than the critical angle, then we conclude that there is no refraction and the light is totally reflected back into the diamond. Okay, that is for letter A. And then for letter B, uh, we're going to repeat, uh, repeat part A, but we're going to assume that the diamond is surrounded by water. We're just uh, going to change here the, the value of N2. Now, in this case, the value of N2 is uh, the index of refraction of water. So we just need to change this, okay, from air now to water. So for water, again, that's 1.33. So the value here is equal to, so the critical angle is 33.3 degrees. And then in the illustration, we have here the distance from the converging lens to the focal um, point that is also the focal length. And then of course, this is the, the principal axis. So with a diverging lens, spatial rays that are parallel to the principal axis appears to originate from the focal point. Okay, again, so this is the focal point. So the rays are diverging. Again, this is the distance from the focal focal point to the uh, focal point to the diverging lens. So that is called the focal length. So we have here the converging lenses and diverging lenses. Again, rays that are um, near the principal axis and parallel to to the uh, to it converges to a single point on the axis after emerging from the lens. This point is called the focal point. Okay, so that's the definition of the focal point of the lens. And then the distance from the focal point and the lens is called the focal length. Converging lens causes the incident. Um, causes incident uh, and parallel rays to converge at a focal point and then the converging lens causes incident parallel rays to con to diverge after exceeding the lens so that's the difference between converging lens and diverging lens so here's the image formation by a converging lens as you can see here when the object is placed further than twice the focal length of the lens the real image is inverted so here is inverted and is smaller than the object when the object is placed between so here is f and here is the 2f so the object is here so if the object is placed between f and 2f the real image is inverted as you can see this is inverted and larger than the object and then when the object is placed between F and the lens, here's the object. The virtual image is upright. Here's the image that is upright and larger than the object. So this can be verified using um, experimentation and also based on the given values. So the virgin lens always forms an upright virtual diminished image. So we will be using the thin lens equation. So as you can see, this is the same with the mirror equation. So we have the distance of the object, distance of the image, and the focal length. And for us to solve for the magnification, so the same formula, this is the height of the image, height of the object, distance of the image to the lens, and then distance of the object to the lens. So we have sign conventions for lenses. So F is positive if that is a converging lens, F is negative for diverging lens. Distance of the object is positive if the object is uh, to the left of the lens. Then negative if that is right of the lens. Positive for an image formed in the right of the lens. So that's a real image. And then negative for an image formed to the left of the lens. And that is classified as virtual image. M is positive for upright image and M is negative for inverted image. So this is for our magnification. So a 1.75 meter tall person is standing 3.50 meters, meters in front of a camera. So a 1.75 meter tall. So this is the, the height of the object it is standing 3.50 meters in front of the camera. So we have the given distance of the object. 
the camera uses a converging lens so we have a converging lens here and then the focal length is 0 0.0500 meters so since we are dealing with converging lens meaning the focal um, the focal length here is positive so find the image distance and determine whether the image is real or virtual and find the magnification in height of the image on the film so we are asked to get here the distance of the image so we 1 over di again the formula here is 1 over f minus 1 over distance of the object so this is equal to 1 over the uh, the focal length 0 0.05 meters minus 1 over the distance of the object so that's equal to so the distance of the object is 3.50 meters okay so solve for di so di is equal to so that's 1 divided by 0 0.05 minus 1 over 3.15 okay so this is equal to 0 0.05 0 0.05 meter so this is a real image Again, I'll be recomputing this. 1 over 0 0.05 minus 1 divided by 3.50. 1 divided by the answer. So we have 0 0.05 meter. Again, that's the value of the distance of the image. Now, find the magnification in height of the image. So let's solve the magnification. So magnification is equal to negative di over do. So we have negative di is or minus di 0 0.05 meter over distance of the object 3.50 meter. So the magnification is equal to 0 0.05 over 3.50 this is equal to negative 0 0.014 okay so we have the negative value here so the negative value means that the image is inverted okay so we have this value of magnification and then after that let's compute for the height of the image okay so height of the image can be computed again using the magnification formula so m is equal to hi over ho so hi is equal to m multiplied by ho so this is simply equal to negative magnification which is negative 0 0.014 multiplied by the height of the object 1.75 meters so this is equal to so the answer is negative 0 0.025 meter so that is the height of the image we have magnification of negative 0 0.014 and distance of the image to the lens is equal to 0 0.05 meter an object is placed 6.50 centimeter to the left of a diverging lens now we are dealing with diverging lens here place 6.50 centimeter so meaning this is the distance of the object okay we have the given uh, focal length 4.90 centimeters so here this is a diverging lens meaning this is a negative value okay find the image distance and determine whether the image is real or virtual and then compute for the magnification so let's compute again for the distance of the image the formula is 1 over f minus 1 over distance of the object so we have here 1 over 
negative 4.90 centimeters. Again, why negative? Because this is a diverging lens. So 1 over uh, negative uh, 4.90 centimeter minus 1 over the distance of the object, 6.50 centimeters. So the distance of the image is equal to negative 2.79 centimeters. Okay, here is the distance of the image, negative 2.79 centimeters. And then again, so we have here the negative value. So what is the meaning of the negative value? So the negative value of the distance of the image only uh, tells that this is virtual. Okay, this is a virtual image. And that is located to the left of the lens. That is located to the left. So if that is a virtual, meaning the image is located to the left of the lens. And then let's compute for the magnification. So magnification is, we have this formula again, di over do. And that is equal to negative, negative 2.79 centimeters over the distance of the object, 6.50 centimeters. So that's negative. Then we have negative value here. Of course, the answer will be positive. So this is positive, 0. 43. So the answer is positive 0 0.43 meaning positive that is upright. The image is upright and then that is smaller than the object. Okay, so that is smaller than the object.